Tweens in Godot 4 are amazing. Tweens are a lightweight object that you create in script to create an animation that will be interpolated over a range of values. In Godot 4, the old tweening system has been completely overhauled. It's more lightweight than ever before and incredibly useful for using code to drive an animation. They can be used for simple things like moving an object from point A to point B or a complete procedurally animated view model rig. It's incredibly useful for animations where you don't know the final values in advance. For example, in my FPS template, I'm currently working on an update which includes a rig with fully procedural animations. As the player moves the mouse, the rig will twist and move corresponding to the mouse movement. Aside from an incredibly tedious IK setup, this could be achieved with three lines of code. Okay, maybe six. I can expose some variables to the designer to play around with, and suddenly we have a weapon that reacts to mouse movement. Tweens are so useful, in fact, that 80% of my procedural animations are done with tweens. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we can utilize this tool to its greatest potential. But first, a word from this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to delve deeper into math, science, data science, and computer science. With new lessons added every month, they've created a fun and interactive learning platform that makes understanding complex subjects a breeze. With thousands of lessons covering topics like logic, AI, computer science, and more, whether you're a beginner or looking to tackle advanced concepts, Brilliant tailors its content to suit your needs and lets you progress at your own pace. If you're new to coding or want to get a better handle on the code in this video, then the programming with Python course would be perfect for you, since Godot's GD script is often compared to Python. You'll be able to click on things, see how they work, then be asked questions to make sure that you're retaining the things that you've learned. You can explore all that Brilliant.org has to offer with their 30-day free trial. And for the first 200 viewers who sign up for Brilliant's annual premium subscription through the link below, there's an exclusive 20% discount. Thank you again to Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to learning all about tweens in Godot. Let's create a very simple example to demonstrate. I have the Godot icon and say I want to move it from its position from where it is to somewhere else on the screen. I've added a script to the icon and in the ready function I'm calling move forward. You can create a tween very easily by simply typing gettree.createtween. Okay, that's it. I'm Isaac from Chef Games, and I'll see. Okay, no. There are four types of tweeners that you can create callbacks, intervals, methods, and properties. The most common one is probably going to be property, which is what we'll use here. I'll pass in the self argument as the object. We'll be moving the position. If you ever need to check the name of a property that you want to tween, you can hover over it in the inspector. I'll type position as a string here, but I only want to change the x axis for this example. So I can type semicolon x. You can use this to access sub properties. For example, the x and y of a vector 2. I will use the viewport to calculate the position between two. I want to move the sprite to four fifths of the viewport. I'll type get viewport.size.x divided by five, and then I'll multiply that by four. And I'll set the duration to one. If we run the game, the sprite will move from left to right off the screen. But with one line of code, we can create movement very easily. And because I used the viewport to calculate the distance to move, if we change the viewport back to the default, then it will still move to the same position, which is really cool. Okay, so let's look at a real in-game application of this. I've got this simple platform in my FPS template that I've been using to test out my jump and movement mechanics. It has a character body 3D for the platform and two node 3Ds to mark the position of the start and end points. So I can create a platform easily with this scene. I have one here, but I wanna create another so you need to jump between them to get across this gap. I can duplicate this, flip it, and then just play around with the points um, and that's all I need really. And also you might notice that the character body is also called a static body because I originally tried to do this with a static body and it didn't work, what did you know? You need to use a character body 3D for this. But hey, we're all students in this. Okay, and as you run, you can see that's really all you need. These platforms are moving towards each other nicely. And all you have to do is when they get close, jump in between them and you're good. And so you can land on them, no problems. Okay, so if you want a more detailed path, you would either need more points to cycle through or perhaps you'd need to use a path instead but for simple back and forth this works perfectly let's go over it here i store each of the items as an export node just in case i want to change them and at the ready function i move the platform to its starting position to prevent any strange behavior from the tween then i call this move platform function which creates a tween um, i store this in a variable so i can call on it multiple times and do certain things with it and i'm using this function set process 
mode, which is necessary since this object is interacting with other character bodies, um, it needs to be called on the physics frame. Without this, it's going to look a little bit strange when the player jumps on the platform since their movement is being updated on different processes by default. Then I use the function set loops, which allows you to tell the tween how many times to repeat or if left blank, it goes on forever. According to the docs, there should be a delay between each step. So I have added the set delay. Um, I could also use a tween interval at the end because that's effectively a timer. Um, it also mentions the duration. So maybe I'm fine without it. Um, it's not being super specific about it here in the docs, but I've gone with both. Okay, and I've made a few changes over the last couple of days where I've set some easing and some transitions and I've also started using the tween interval to give the platform a pause in between when it moves to its next spot. So if you check this out, you can, <laughs> they stay still long enough that you can make the jump on the first one, which is really cool. Uh, you have to do a crouch jump to make it, but yeah, you can see that it sort of speeds up in the middle there and then slows down when it reaches its center point and then just stops for three seconds, which I don't know. I think this looks really cool. At this point, I would say like, you got to use tweens for your platforms. I don't know how you deal with like platforms moving along a path. Maybe you can tween the progress of the remote transform or something like that. Just an idea. Um, anyway, moving on. So next we're going to go over my favorite thing to use a tween for, and that is a smooth camera zoom. I've got a scene here with a ship and a cursor, which also uses tween, so you can download it in the description. Right now the camera is static and doesn't have a zoom, but we can do both with tweens. I'll attach a script and I'll call it something like camera. I'll create a few variables here for the tween, zoom, and I'll set a maximum and a minimum and the amount that we're going to change each time we press the zoom button. I'll also make these exports so that we can change them in the editor. In the ready function, I will set the camera zoom to be equal to the height of the camera. Next, we'll add an input function. I've created these inputs already and they are scroll up and scroll down inputs on my mouse. We'll check if those inputs are pressed and we'll calculate the new zoom. Let's create a function called zoom tween and it'll take a zoom as an int and we'll just put that to be passed right now. And in these input functions, in the scroll in, I will use the max function to reduce the zoom, but not below our set minimum. So that'll be camera zoom minus zoom increment, comma, min zoom. And in the scroll out, I will use the min function to increase the zoom, but not above our set maximum. And I'm gonna call the zoom function after both inputs. In the zoom function, I'll create a tween, but this time I'll store it in the variable camera tween. And I will tween the camera using the self argument and tween the Y position to set the zoom amount. I'll also make the duration one. Okay, so if I run this here, you'll see that I can zoom in and zoom out. I can raise and lower the camera, but you'll notice that it's not a very smooth experience. But with tweens, we have quite a lot of power to change this behavior. I'll start by adding an ease out with set ease. This will slow down the tween as it gets close to the end of the position, but it won't have much effect as we need to set up a transition as well. There's a number of choices here and it can be a bit overwhelming. So we need to set the trans. I'm gonna go with trans expo, but there's actually a number of uh, different ones we use. The default is translinear, uh, which is just a straight line. So you can see now that the tween actually starts really quickly and it just eases off at the end which is I think the right kind of effect for a zoom camera. You want a fairly quick response when you start zooming, but when it slows down, you need it to sort of ease back into its position. So it's not so abrupt. So here's a look at the different transition types. You've got a few different options. I'm using Expo down the bottom here, which you can see is quite, especially with ease out, a steep curve up to the top straight away. So there's a lot of different options. You can always refer back to these images if you need to sort of get an idea for how things will behave graphic there is made by Reddit user Wandom Pulin, so thank you for that. The next thing we need to do is address that we are repeatedly creating a tween and animating it. And according to the docs, this is bad. So we should check each call to see if the tween is already running, and if it is, kill it. That's not me being violent, that's just the name of the function. So we'll just come back into the script here and at the very top of the zoom tween, if camera tween, camera tween dot kill. That's all we have to do. and. Personally, I haven't noticed much of a difference when continuously creating a tween like this, 
But if you have a second tween somewhere in your script performing a movement on the same parameter, then you'll definitely have trouble. I was running into this issue when I was creating the lean in my FPS shooter. And what was happening is I've got a button, obviously one to lean one way, one to lean left, one to lean right. And if you spammed them back and forth, you wouldn't return to zero because the tweens were still running and they were both operating on the same parameter. So all what I had to do was create three variables for each of the tweens, left, right, and center. And in each of the input situations, just check if the other tweens were running and kill them. And now it works perfectly. Okay, so one thing that we lost in Gitto 4 is the interpolated camera. And so that means that when you're trying to create a 3D game and you need a top-down view with a camera, but you want like a smooth follow, then, you know, like you could create like a node setup so that you can rotate your character, but no rotate the camera like I've got here. And so this will work. It will follow the player pretty much perfectly, but there's no easing. There's no interpolation as you would. So, you know, it stops and starts very quickly. Now we can create a tween setup so that it will follow the camera nicely and sort of slowly pick up and follow the player around, which I think is a much better way of doing things. Um, I'm gonna do this with tweens because obviously that's what this video is about, but you can do it with like flapping as well, obviously. Uh, so let's jump in to the code and start setting that up. I'm going to create an export variable called follow target. It will just be a node 3D. So that will be the ship. Okay, so we will also need to create the process function. So I'll add that in here. I'll create a tween variable called var follow tween. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna check if the follow tween exists to kill the follow tween, just like we've done with the camera tween. And then right after that, I'm gonna write Follow tween equals get tree dot create tween, just like we have before. Um, I'm gonna set this one to just ease out and I'll put the trans as something like trans sign because we want a nice even movement, but not too fast like the camera. Next we'll write follow tween dot tween property. Obviously it's gonna be self again, the position, but this time we're gonna write follow target dot get position because that's what we wanna tween to, the position of the 3D node that we're tracking. And I'll make it one second. Uh, and just as an extra set of protections, I'm gonna write at the very top here, if follow target. So if that's not set, the game won't crash. Um, and before I forget as well, we don't really wanna uh, follow the position of the Y axis. So I'm gonna have to create two sets of tween properties here, one for the X and one for the Z, so that we're not tweening on the Y axis. One other thing that we'll need to do here as well, if we're doing two properties at the same time, we are going to need to set this as parallel. This is really important to know how to do this. Otherwise the tweens go in succession and not at the same time. So dot set parallel true, and we'll just run that now. And as you can see, we've already got like a nice smooth camera that follows the target pretty nicely. Might be a little bit slow. We can make it a bit faster, but you know, we can zoom when the player moves, the camera follows. This is all really great. Uh, with set parallel, you can also do it on the line of the property you want to make parallel. So right after we tween the X position, we can on the next one down, write dot parallel and the exact same thing will be true, which is really good. And we can make one faster than the other just to see how that looks. And then obviously you can see that it's a little bit slow. I changed it to 0.5 for both because I feel like that's a bit nicer. Yeah, it's a little bit more immediate, but you could also set the uh, follow speed as like an export variable that you could play around with. Okay, so the next problem that I wanna address in this while I'm here is that the player isn't in the center of the camera and we can fix that with a little bit of trigonometry. And so we can create another export variable and we'll call it the offset. So this is uh, the distance that the player will be from the camera. I'll make it like 1.5 and what we'll do is we'll just add that to the Z calculation and so that we won't be directly above the player. And now we can also do a little bit of trigonometry because we know how high the player is and we know how far away we are from the player. So we've created a nice little right angle triangle that I'm gonna draw out in like paint here. So you've got your Y and then you've got your X, which is the elf set that we've created. And obviously this is at 90 degrees. And so now there's a direct line from the camera to the player that we can calculate an angle for. So if we jump back over into the script in the zoom tween function, what we can do 
is we can calculate this. One thing to remember is that the rotation facing fully down is negative 90. So we're gonna to need to take that into account when we calculate it, it's not zero. So we can come back into the zoom tween function here and we can tween an additional property here. We can make it self, uh, rotation, semicolon X, and the variant is going to be deg to rad, negative 90. Now I've got to use radians because one of these functions returns radians, the other one we know in degrees. So we might as well just convert one of them and I've decided it's gonna be the 90. So then we're gonna add the a tan and it's gonna be offset divided by position y and it's gonna take one second just like the zoom. Okay, in the ready function, I'm also gonna set that rotation calculation up as well. So rotation.x is just gonna be equal to deg to rad negative 90 plus a tan offset divided by position y again. And so that we're gonna be facing the player from the get go. And as you can see, as I zoom in and out, there's a little bit of rotation to keep the player in center. If we make the offset bigger, you'll see this more in action. So I've set that to five now and there's quite a steep angle. And as you zoom out, there's this sort of like rotation towards the player's center. And I just think this is a really nice touch because you want, depending on the game you make, obviously, you want the player to be in the center. And so I think, you know, that's really cool. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. If you found this helpful, I really do appreciate a like and subscribe. Obviously, if you want to support the channel, you can do so on the Patreon or you can become a YouTube member as well. They have the same perks, you get early videos, access access to a private Discord channel, and if you're on the higher tiers you get access to my FPS Pro template, and this update is coming soon at some point, I think. <laughs> anyway guys, that's all from me, I'm Azak from Shaft Games, and I'll see you next time.